don't know if that was full uh, 10 15 minutes, but hey, I got myself my coffee. Have to walk around a bit. It's the restroom. I got coffee. Comes out loud. Uh, coffee mug. Available at Zazzle.com slash comes out loud. Zazzle also has other localizations. Just scroll down to the bottom. You can switch uh, to where you're from. Cheaper prices and shipping. Not exactly sure how all that works, but. Yeah. We can go back to Ishgard. Probably in this situated in the Javanian hinterland. To get there, we must strike west and traverse the breadth of the Javadian forelands. Make no mistake, it will be a grueling journey. The party shall be comprised of Essigos, Yashtola, and myself. Haru, play remain in Ishgard and continue the search for our missing events. Yes, sir. First, let's make for Tailbelly. Long soak in the life stream followed by a long journey. I would not recommend it to anyone. But rest assured my strength is returned and I shall be back to my former self ere long. I believe I am sufficient, sufficiently rested. Let us continue west to Shalian. Once we have descended the mountain path, we will arrive at the Giovanni and Hinterlands. From there, we, it is but a short distance to the be warned that we shall be passing through Nath territory. We must needs be wary of them and the dragons both. Probably could have they teleported to him to try and then speed come down here, but those are just more direct around. I'll be switching back to my Chocobo after this cutscene. <laughs> to the Thaliac River, where to the melted snows of Abelathia's spine eventually find their way by means of a thousand silver streams. Whose waters have long nourished the Dravanian hinterlands and so provided for a settlement of learned souls from across the northern seas. To the city of Shalian, that great seat of knowledge now abandoned by her keepers, they came.
Toya dwells on the far side of the Thalic River that has searched for a crossing. Faster speed. Nope. This feels that way, probably because I'm not. Or so. er, because I'm. I got two of the eight birds.
Knowledge seeks no man. So says the motto of Charlene engraved upon yonder stone. The meaning is simple. Calls to us to seek enlightenment. During the sixth astral area era in the at the end of the thirteenth century, men from the northern nation of Charlene journeyed across the seas to Eorzea in search of knowledge. Upon arriving to these shores, they established a camp for their scholarly endeavors. Over time, this camp grew into a settlement, and the settlement prospered, and so much so that it came to be counted among Eorzea's great city state. Alas, those glory days are now but a fading memory. With her keepers lost to her, Charlie has become an empty husk of from the self. A blender is mistaken. Charlene has new keepers. Is in cusp of new age of glory. Goblins? Did the plunder the city? <gasps> A blender is mistaken, much leave. We are not thieves. This place is our home. Your home? When last I looked, it was mine in Alpha now. You were born here? When Uplanders abandoned city, Uplanders gave up claim. Born here or no, Uplanders are trespassers. Now friends, please, we did not come to dispute our claim to the land. Our purpose here is peaceful. We desire but to cross the river. Be calm, I beg you, and let us speak like the civilized folk that we are. Surely you will come to a mutual understanding. If this is truth, then Uplanders are welcome here. Come with Slowfix. Slowfix will show Uplander settlement. Chicken salt.
I'm at 261. And I'll be getting a little bit higher as we go along, but... Here's a heart. Here's Heart of Settlement. Name of Idleshire. Oh, what do you got here, Jet? Here, yes. Greetings to you. I am Alphano Livio, and may I introduce my companions, Eskos Winsmall and Yishtova. We are journeying far in search of our friend and seek to cross the river. But finding the main bridge collapsed, you went looking for a detour and ended up stumbling into Slowfix and his crew, is that right? Well, that's a short bit I. This place, Idleshire, I came expecting a ghost town. Suffice it to say, I'm surprised to find it so alive. Well, with all of them pr precious artifacts lying about, it was only a matter of time before treasure hunters like me moved in. But we weren't the first to arrive, neither. Neither. By then, Slowfix and his gobby friends are already settled. At first, gobbies and hunters dislike each other, but understanding came then friendship. Now, gobbies and hunters have joined hands to build a great new nation. But that is what happened after we shot in departed. Oh, so you're locals. Um, no hard feelings, I hope. All, all these nice buildings and no one to live in them it felt like a waste now. We've been trying to put the place the place to rights, and things have been going well for the most part, but it ain't all smooth sailing. Not to sound ungrateful, but the traps your people left lying about are bloody nuisance. And there's the Illuminati Harry us it day and night. Slowfix is bright idea. Uplanders desire mutual understanding, yes? Best way of understanding is helping one another. Help citizens of Idleshire, and Uplanders can be citizens too. Citizens are free to cross rivers. Well, I'm not aware of a quicker way to reach our destination. Just the so fix and his people. So Uplanders agree to help? Good. Here's what Slowfix wants Uplanders to do. Many golems prowl Eidershire chair get in the way of expansion plans. Slowfix wants Uplanders to eliminate golems. Uplanders are Charlian, yes? Charlians who know the best way to deal with creatures. So we have to eliminate the golems. That would be simple enough with that. The Automata. Automata. There are unemployed as sentinels and by design can be unmade with the coded command. At the time of the exodus, it was not uncrossable, and I see no reason why it should not be built. Let us divide the task between the three of us, the quicker to finish it. The shadow of the column crumbles. We're doomed yourself to all the eight event shards in Edelshire. A flawed gate and snow system. What's the user name?
Oh, those are no more? Wonderful. Now we can resume work to expand settlement. Uplanders help Gobby Flock uh, uh, learn right to, to be citizens of Idlefire. But Slowfix must ask another favor. Another favor, you say. A time ago, a dear friend of Slowfix ventured into Illuminati territory. Illuminati or nasty goblins show no mercy even towards Gobbykin. And Slowfix fears for her friend's life. Please uh, find friend before Illuminati do. I'm suddenly taken by a sense of Cody. These out of his bay, we cannot turn a blind eye. Let us make haste and find Snowfix's friend. Alright, give a uh, dog nuggles. And scratches. Good doggy. Of course, I have a bias towards all dogs, though. I mean, when in doubt, you can join the COL Telegram at findyourall.com slash telegram.col. You can post it there. Ethernet charge. Just think of what what it would be like if all of the the Charlian ruins here were uh, were part of an actual Charlian city. This would be like way bigger than any of the actual the other city states. Oh, here we go. Brave Flocks! What is she doing here? This is, yes, I found out at one point that Brave Flocks is a she. I apologize for any misgendering that I've done previously. the uplander long time no eye catch what is bringing uplander here does uplander have uh lusty eyes for junk of brave flocks uplander must not be touching junk of brave flocks my brave flocks is finding junk first i knew i recognized that voice greetings brave flocks it's been a while forgive us for interrupting your work but Captain Westcott gave me to understand that you were marked by the Illuminati. What happens to be this happens to be Illuminati held territory. Is it wise to be here? Shh. Brave Flax eat Illuminati for sun upsies. Who eats who for sun upsies? Ah! <laughs> Brave flocks, all talks. Unwise you here, you are to come here for dirty, dirty taking secret knowings of cheese make from Illuminati. 
Gray Flocks did not. Did no unright. She's recipe is gotta be birthright. Save tub flat for trading in death death pit. Pray to Godfather. Godfather for punishment is near times. It appears we have no choice. Got distracted by dogs. He Illuminati no match for furious gob fists of brain flocks. More junk is awaiting brave flocks, much later. Brainflax is taking leave of Uplanders. <laughs> we all just shrug. <laughs> I love Brainflax. Being embroiled in a cheese wall was the last thing I expected coming to, uh, coming to Charlene. At any rate, we have fulfilled the fixed request. Let us return to the good tidings and be on our way. Give me a need for it. <laughs> Uplanders are back. The Uplanders, a uh, fine friend of Slowfix. Yeah, we from Barry Flocks and the uh, beat them. some Illuminati. <laughs> Time has not cured recklessness of Brave Flocks. Without help from Uplanders, Brave Flocks would now be dead Gobby. 
Lofix owes Uplander's debt of gratitude. Lofix and Bracelax are joined by unseverable Gobby Bond. If Slowfix had known that Uplanders are friends of Greyflocks, Slowfix would have welcomed Uplanders to Gobbyflock this first meeting. Uplanders have upheld bargain most, uh, most highly. As promised, Slowfix speaks of Uplander honored citizens of Adioshire, free to cross river at will. Though Uplanders must leave for now, Slowfix hopes that Uplanders will pay many visits and help build great new nation. You are most kind, my friend. You may be certain that we will return. I must confess, at first it upset me to learn that my home has been occupied by others, but I see now that it is in good hands. Under your care, I look forward to seeing Charlene thrive once more to become a home for people of all races and breeds. Slowfix has already or ordered the Gobwatch to let Uplander through. Safe travels! Elfin now? Essigos? Probably then. By order of T Slowfix, Uplanders can come and go at will. One moment for clearing away barricade. Finally, we can continue our journey. Behind any misadventures, we shall soon arrive at the cave where Moktoya uh, resides. Unless you have unfinished business in Idleshire, let us strike out at once. I am ready whenever you are. Let us go and meet the legendary Matoya. <laughs> Head lies the answering quarter, where the scholars of Charlene gather to hone their knowledge. Even from this distance, it's plain that much of it has been given back to the wilderness. The cave in which Montoya resides is situated in the southern edge of the hinterlands. By choosing this spot, my master desired pri privacy above all else. As such, the cave is extremely well hidden. You will not find it unless you know where to look for it. We shall follow the road south until we reach a bridge. Rather than cross it, however, we shall ford the stream it spans, thence head straight until we arrive at the base of the bluff. In the meantime, Girl's puppy is so cute. Aha! 
Neath a curry. Get up there. I need to. Map is huge. There it is. Hey, I got five out of ten already. That's pretty nice. This is the entrance. Hmm. You seem unconvinced, Eskos. Well, that will um, add to the surprise. Word of warning before you proceed, stubborn geniuses uh, make poor hosts, and time will have said not to improve my master's attempt. In doubt not, to, not, but there will be sentinels and traps, both to deter unwanted guests, but will also be deserved. Uh, go on and touch the wall yonder. You will want to have your weapon near, near at hand. 
As the ghost has responded, my fists are the weapons. My weapons, I always do. <laughs> my weapons are my hands. And the host may suffice to encourage the average trespass, but not the warrior of life. The way should be now be clear. Come, let us go and see my master. It's rude to enter without knocking. <laughs> the use of today. No manners at all. Though we neglected to knock, we did create something of a commotion. I had hoped that would suffice. Heavy handed as ever, I see. And still not a hint of grace. Some things never change. To give credit where credit is due, I learned from the best. It has been too long, Master Matoya. Indeed it has. Oh, it's good to see you again, my girl. And with your fiery spirit unquenched. But look at you, all grown up and womanly. The one there in the fancy duds, that's Louis Soir's granddaughter, I take it? <clears throat> Grandson, begging your pardons. You knew my grandfather, my lady. Knew him? Ha! We were constantly at each other's throats. Like rabid dogs we were. <laughs> oh, he was a stubborn bugger, was your grandfather. <laughs> Never a dull moment when he was around, though I'll give him that. As for you, boy, I've known you since you were a rosy-cheeked babe at the teat. And my sister, too, I gather. May I say what an honor it is to meet you again, my lady? Spare me the hollow pleasantries, boy. I'll wager my remaining good teeth you didn't come to a forgotten corner of Eosia to flirt with a wrinkly old woman. Now out with it. What is it you need of me? Alphano explains the situation. One of those things is we already know all this, so fade to black passes the time. I never thought I'd hear that name again. You are familiar with it. As familiar as one can get from poring over musty old tomes. The Alagon set the Isle afloat not long before the sun set on their empire. Old Louis Soi and I often talked about it. The place is home to a research facility dedicated to finding ways of mastering mighty beings, such as primals and dragons, and find ways it did to frightening ones. Such secrets as lie buried on Azizla aren't fit to see the light of day. And now you tell me a band of dragon-beating primal botherers are trying to dig them up? Indeed. And to make matters worse, the Asians have a hand in their plot. They must be stopped, no matter the cost. I see. Very well. You will help us then? Truly? I had not anticipated such an impassioned response. Could it be that the presence of young blood has stirred your own? Big minor jobs. Ah, some things never change. 
What a day that pertness is going to cost you your tail, my girl. Don't say I didn't warn you. Yay, movement speed in the hinterland uh, has increased. Ah, an ether curry quest. Twas some um, fifty years ago, shortly after Garlemald had brought all of Ilthabad under its rule. Faced with a threat of invasion, the people of Charlian scrambled about for a means to resist the Empire. For my part, I was tasked with developing an etheric converger. Ah, yes, a device which draws in ether and concentrates it to produce a destructive force. But as my research neared its end, it was denounced by the Forum, who claimed that my device was more likely to destroy us than our enemies. After that, they and I had a little falling out, and I decided to seal away all the fruits of my research, lest the dunder-headed ingrates reap any benefit. Ha! <laughs> Petty, I know, but gods. It was satisfying. Do mine ears deceive? T'was you, was it not, who were so fond of saying that all knowledge exists to advance mankind? That how it is used depends on us? I don't remember. Perhaps. All right, yes. That was a pet phrase of mine. And that should give you a notion of how sick and tired I was of those spineless wretches of the Forum. All talk and no trousers, that lot. That's why I decided to remain behind, rather than join the Exodus. You may have had your disagreements with my grandfather, but upon that point, your minds were as one. With respect, Master, the fruits of your research should not be left to spoil. Will you share with us the secrets of the Etheric Converger? Aye, I will. All the information you need is contained in a tome I wrote on the subject. But you'll have to fetch it from the forbidden section of the Great Library. Ah, you were not exaggerating when you said that you had sealed it away. Though the city is abandoned, the Library's guardians are all but certain to remain. We must needs cut a path through them. Come, let us away. Not so fast, you lot. Stoll and the boy are staying with me. I need help to make new sentinels to replace the old ones you walloped. <laughs> They'll be bored and lodging, don't you worry. But know that you'll have to work for them. Hard. I'll have no sluggards in my house. <laughs> oh, lovely. Oh, the great library's guardian shouldn't put pose any difficulty for a hero like you. You've hardly noticed Stola's absence. And the girl, the girl, boy, whatever, would only get in your way. But if it turns out you aren't up to the task, well, then I know you can't be trusted with something as dangerous as an etheric ram. No, the library's entrance is locked tight. I'll loan you one of my servants to open it. The broom yonder. Well, what are you waiting for? Introduce yourself, boy. Greetings, good sir. I am Brumsy, a lady servant for some 50 years. May I say what an honor it is to serve you. I'm given to understand that you wish to enter the great Google Library. You'll find it pray head east upon leaving this cave. The building will come into view shortly after you reach the collapsed bridge. I shall go on ahead and await you at the entrance. When your preparations are in order, come pray come and meet me there. 
It will be my pleasure to unlock the door for you. Walking through. Well. What can you say? There he is. There's only enough from heading east. Four more and then five quests. Well, four because I'm currently on one. Other ones way up here. You stand before the great Google Library, one of Heidelin's foremost repositories of knowledge. Alas, it has fallen upon disuse since the exodus, some summers since, and all those years its halls welcomed not the coming of a single soul. Its floors felt not the lovely brush of a broom. My, mine apologies, sir. Pray pay, pay no mind to the dreams of a humble broom. You are the doubtless eager to venture within and retrieve my lady's tome. I shall unlock the door at once. When you have what you seek, pray return to the cave and report to my lady. So, while we're doing for this, only nine minutes. Not bad. We'll see about uh, it's a curse. Because being able to fly is important. Actually, yeah, we'll go this way. How many will it keep? Oh, I'm down to three. I mean, total of eight, because I still have quests to do, but still. Why am I going back into Matoya's cave right now?
Oh, it's me, Ribbit. Mistress Batoya will have my hide. What's wrong? You, you are a guest, and yet you have lent me your aid. Oh, thank you, fucking adventurer. I'm in your debt. Mimi, to introduce myself, Ribbit. I am Saro Rogo, a humble servant of Mistress Matoya. I am tasked with the picking leaves from her uh, herb garden, from which I make her tea. At last, drawn to their medicinal properties, bugs have recently taken to ra ravaging the herbs. I attempted to get rid of the pests, but they are too much for a lone Poro Rogo. Porago. Porago. Rago. To handle. I would be grateful if you would eliminate them in my stead. Bugs are no more. Oh, thank you. Not only are you kind, but you are strong and ribbed. Now I can resume my duties again. Harvesting and making tea is all I am capable of. I'm a failed creation, you see. Unlike my mistress and other children, I'm incompetent and clumsy. For want of her tasks I have performed, she bade me serve her tea seven times daily. But even in this, I needed assistance. Unless I make myself more useful, tis only a matter of time before my mistress removes my enchantment and I revert to an ordinary toad incapable of speech. I cannot bear the thought of that. I must become a better servant, and I believe that I can do so, if only I knew what my mistress desires. We received her blessing, the rooms here are bound to possess this knowledge. Alas, they refuse to talk to me. But as you are a guest, they cannot willfully ignore you, even if you are not entirely cooperative for Fort what Right, please speak with them, Ribbit, and acquire the information I need to provide. All right. I'm not sure if this is one. No, it's not. We've had this issue, that's the skirt. Ah! Half six is a very important task for a trusty uplander. It must be done with fastest. Aether out of Eidershire needs, of, needs for expansion. Inspection. Maybe he needs upkeep too. If gobbies do not take a look and fix the little problems, the spinning may, may sunder and stop where there, there is a very big boom. Havsik does not have the right tools. Uplander, there is no time to waste. Havsik needs ether flow distributors. 
the nearest are at the base of are in the base of Illuminati. Come, come raid their store box. Mountain Dew or Midnight Dew, not Mountain Dew. Ah. God damn it, it's been I've been had. Some twice cursed sons of mad blind bitch who made off with with all my takings and my tradables too. I knew this place was full of treasure hunters, but I never reckoned it would be my treasures that'd be hunted. But it ain't just my losses that concern me. The gobbies count on the goods that I bring in to keep this place fed and watered. If I don't get my stock back, this whole town might fall apart. What do you say, Adventurer? Will you help me bring these demon curves to a book? An adventurer coming back from the answering quarter says he bumped into a gang of ill-looking brutes on Fritbridge. Uh, nearly knocked the poor kid into the salic, they said. They did. Anyhow, he says they're heading into the ruins. Meet me there and we'll start the search. There for this one. Yeah. Two. I have three at the moment. The fourth one, and then it's about tracking everything down. I think the other one's at the shortstop. No, here's the plan. Considering the weight of the stuff they stole, they won't get far on foot. Chances are they got a boat, boat hidden somewhere. I'll get in onto my crew and have them stake out the river bank. In the meantime, I want you to search the ruins for whatever you can find. It might be the bandits are lying low out there. Maybe they're sta stashed the loot and moved on. If you could change on any of my belongings, I'd be obliged if you bring them back to me. It was there. Keep calling her Mountain Dew, but it's Midnight Dew. These Hell's Guard, uh, or whatever they're called, rugged in our, uh, I have weird names. Lori Boulder.
After this, I think I'll take a quick break to, to refill my
he doing?
Oh, man. Now we have to go through this shit. You would think if someone DC'd that if they tried logging in again, that they would like have a placeholder.
Now I need to find that book, now that I've eliminated threats. Oh. Five out of six crystals, re-empowered. Actually, uh, before I do that, I'm going to take a quick break. I'm going to refill the coffee, uh, uh, coffee tea, and and. All right. Back to Bentoyas. Because MSQ comes before the other quest. Uh, 
Although the Aether Quest could give me flying, which means that I can do MSQ faster, but the stream is focused on story. Also, I'm level 50, uh, 53, 63, so that's kind of cool. I take it you found the tome. Well, let's see it then. Ah, this is this is it, all right. Stola, boy, put down whatever you're doing and come here. As ghost has returned with the tome. Thank the gods, but in another minute under Master Matoya's exacting supervision, I would certainly have lost my mind. Or mayhaps merely my temper. Some things have changed indeed. Well, I for one appreciate the exacting supervision. In the, sh in the short while we have been here, I feel that I've gained a far better understanding of arcane entities than I did during my entire lifetime at the studio. If the opportunity presents itself, I should very much like to employ this knowledge for the betterment of mankind, create a new variety of carbuncle, perhaps. Don't get afraid of yourself, boy. Who is Swar's grandson or no? I'll take another decade under me before you call yourself a scholar, and a deal more than that to, to make you a scholar worth a damn. As you may have gathered, Master Matoya is not easily impressed. Indeed. <laughs> so, uh, Eskos has returned with the tome, has he not? Shall we examine it? Well, besides the fact that quest is really puts it near the current, so... I had not thought to behold this tome again. There. It is deciphered. Now your friend should be able to make sense of the contents. That said, it's one thing to understand the workings of the etheric converger and another to actually make it work. You do realize how much ether is required. Sid is keenly aware of the energy dilemma. His airship is by no means large, and it can only bear a limited quantity of crystals. If only we had white orosite in the etheric siphon. Alas, Minfilia is missing along with both artifacts, and Moonbreeder is gone. Would that there were another ready wellspring of energy for us to draw upon. <gasps> Why did it not occur to us before? We already have what we need. The eye! It has been drawing ether into itself for as long as the great worms have lived. It is a veritable wellspring of energy. Hmm. It might just suit our needs. But is this energy something that can be harnessed at will? I believe so, with the aid of the Azure Dragoon of Ishgard. Then it is settled. Let us return to the Holy See at once. Stola. Wait. When did the light fade from your eyes? I might have known that it would not escape your notice. It has been this way since I returned from the live stream. 
An after effect of the teleportation magic I invoked, most like. They are called forbidden spells for a reason. What were you thinking, girl? I have no regrets. I but did what was necessary to preserve the light of hope, to keep my promise to Minfilia. Besides, it afforded me the rare opportunity to wander the ether, a once-in-a-lifetime experience. I need not tell you that it consumes your very life force to see by sensing the ether around you. Take care of yourself. Do you hear me? I will, Master Matoya. And thank you. Despite her crutching in this, he has a heart. Which is one of the reasons why I love Matoya. As if you could see that from her old people. Hmm. Maybe never mind. Speak out loud. Thanks for your customary heroic efforts. We now possess the knowledge to build an etheric ram. All that remains is to secure its energy source. Let us hasten to Ishgard and consult Sir Emmerich regarding the eye. I'll, I'll do the Aether Current stuff, like, uh, offline. We'll focus on story here. The Aether Current stuff is like... Filler! In the middle, middle of something. Or, or waiting for a queue. And... Offline. I mean, I'm technically online, but... Ah, you have returned. Cermak, I am pleased to see that your recovery proceeds apace. May I introduce you Shrola, a fo fellow scion of the Seventh Dawn and Archon of Charlie. Hello. Pray excuse me for foregoing due pledges, but we seek your counsel regarding the Aetheric Ram. Though we now possess the knowledge to build such a device, we yet lack an appropriate source of energy in which to power it. We believe, however, that Ishgard may possess a solution to our problem. You need not apologize, my lady. Well, eager am I to learn for your progress. Please tell me of this energy source that you possess. Uh, the, uh, the, the Eye of Nidhogg. <laughs> and you're certain the Eye can lend its power to Master Vittoria's etheric conversion? At Astinian's command, yes. Very well, I shall speak with him. My thanks, Sir Mark. Nay, my friend, tis I who would thank you, as should every Ishgardian. You labor in our name with nary a care of your own safety. Let us next speak with Sid. He will doubtlessly be able to be eager to begin work on the Aether Tram. So if I ever saw, saw uh, like, if we were to take my headcanon story of uh, Final Fantasy XIV, one, Essegos would not be the main protagonist. Uh, our Warrior of Light would actually be my main character, Elagos. What I would take is that Essegos would actually end up being... I'm not sure if I would actually name, have him named Eskos, prob probably anyways. Have this like, like, tri pair or, or a group of three where it's uh, Elagos, Ebigos, and Eskos. <laughs> Large, medium, small. But Eskos, our warrior of like Elagos, would essentially, during the, the span of like the 
the uh, animated series. Uh, he would be doing all the science stuff. He would be doing basic. He would be doing all the classes you know, because, like, if you watch the Shadowbringers trailer, which you should, it's, it's awesome. You see that part where the Warrior of Light is battling the angelic-looking being, whatever that may be. I know what it is because uh, uh, Elagos is currently in Shadowbringers. But no spoilers here. And um, he switches jobs during that. So the big part of that is that he learns every job so that we actually see the storylines of the, the class, the job quest during it, where we go through a portion where it's the main story. And then between that, we have parts where he goes to do his job quest. During those job quests, he meets up with for anything that he would have like a party for. These are the party members. And we meet them as he goes to the Thaumaturgus Guild and uh, he learns about Thaumaturgy. While he's there, he meets um, meets someone who's a Thaumaturge. Well, going to the Pugilist Guild, he's going to run into Essigos, being this tiny, tiny, as small as, small as possible uh, uh, Lalafell. Uh, who had it? Who would be the the token pugilist? Where he would always be pugilist slash monk, and he would go on all the pugilist and, and monk class quests or class of job quests with Elegos. But he has this flaw: is he hates everybody underestimating him because he's small. He punches hard as a brick, uh, he, and he will beat the crap out of you if you insult him. He has a temper. Overall, he's a he's a nice person in general, but he gets really upset when people refer to keep calling him as small, underestimating him for what it is. And, and he's just just just. A, bunch of, of uh, just bunch of madness and he, he'll beat the crap out of anybody who says otherwise and then maybe maybe his temper abates as as uh, the story goes on as uh, he adventures with Elegos and kind of gets the rub off from Elegos Anyways, not going to do that tonight. I'm going to be there shortly. Ah, you're back. The preliminary work on the Enterprise is more or less finished. Tell me you found a way to build the Etheric Ram. Greetings, Sid. It's been a while. This tome contains the fruits of my former master's research on a device known as an Etheric Converger. Our Ram could, could operate on this ill same principle. Ah, where are my matters? Put a toy like this in my hand and I go off into my own world. God, it's good to see you. Very to gift besides. Very distracting one, if I might add. If I didn't know any better, I think it was my name day. But there will be a time for a tearful reunion. Take a start on the tone right away. 
So long as I have a grasp of the fundamentals, I should be able to knock something together. Which leaves the small matter of the energy source. We believe we found a solution to that problem as well. They forgive us some of this. The power of the eye is not to be drawn upon lightly, but I believe we have sufficient cause to do so. For this is the fabled eye by the twelve seas. It is a wonder such power can be contained with this control. Boys, our friends have kindly provided all the ingredients. See if we can't make something out of them. You heard the chief? We're not resting until the etheric ram is operational. Not one week of sleep. Ugh. I love those two, uh, Wedgen and Biggs. Often I have a final task before you're Given the danger of the task that lies ahead, I think it's only right that we take a moment to bid our friends and allies farewell. Alas, Sid requires my assistance with Master Botoya's uh, rather singular writings. Might I entrap Trust the task of visiting those who remain behind you. Though the hour is nigh, with that I would join you in the coming battle, but with my wounds I fear it only be a burden. In consorting with the Asians and availing himself with primal power, my father must have made himself an enemy of all that is good and right for me. Do whatever you must to end this madness. May the Fury watch over you. There we go, going out the indoor again. Well, it's starting to Well, my old friend Eskos, off to face the Archbishop and his cronies, is it? I'd love to go and give those bastards a good walking myself. But I felt that snake hard, but uh, especially. But I've got to stay here and keep an eye on things. With the archbishop's gone, some of the poor folk might get in their heads to do something stupid like storming the pillars. But blood won't give us what we want. And I need to be around to remind them that that is the case. Yeah. No need to worry about us anyway. I'll work with Sir Emmerich to preserve the peace. You just concentrate on settling the score with the Archbishop, eh? One nice thing about the, my streaming software, it is capable of uh, making sure the noise of my very loud picture uh, isn't heard by you. Very important. Left to right. This is it then. Go well, my friend. I shall pray the fury to the fury for your protection for preservation. Hmm. May I be think it's strange that a daughter of Galamal should pray? I do not blame you. I used to think it passing strange myself. But that all changed when I discovered something dearer to me than my own life. Therefore, praying seemed the more, most natural thing. Prayers are born of heartfelt faith in man manipulating the person's beliefs for his own twisted ends. The Archbishop makes mockery of their varied existence. It can, I cannot be born. It cannot be born. Taru, what's with the hat? Anyways. So you're off to face the Archbishop then? 
Please be careful and watch over the others, will you? We've lost too many friends as it is. Some may yet return to us, but I couldn't bear to lose anyone. Couldn't. I realize it's asking a lot, but you're the strongest person I know. It, I don't think there's anything you can't achieve if you mind to it. And please, whatever else happens, keep everyone safe. Okay, just, just want to put myself next to the dark. Sorry. Maybe I am about the same height as her. When I made uh, a ghost, I tried to be, I literally brought the slider as low as it could go, so. Master Winsmall, how good of you to pay me a visit. It feels as if it were only yesterday that when first we met here in this... You came to us a fugitive seeking asylum, and now you bear the hopes of our nation upon your shoulders. He would not have told you. Oh, here you go. He would not have told you. But when Holshafal begged me to accept you into our household, he described you as hope incarnate. At the time, I assumed he was waxing lyrical, as was his own quote. But I have come to see that he simply spoke. You are hope. A shining beacon that shall guide the people of Ishgard through the raging snows. A memento. Were my son here, he would have wished to fight at your side in the battle to come. Take care, my friend, and return. Eyed again. And then bequeathed you Lord Horshafon's shield? My noble Threster, bear the hopes and dreams of all of full many souls. Let their faith in us be strengthened, both of strength and courage, as we face our remaining trials. Work on the enterprise is nearly complete, but you still don't know to make ready. Until but recently, the Ishgardians have kept their doors firmly shut to outsiders. But thanks to you, we have found in them stout allies with whom we may fight to secure the future of the realm. 
Truly, you are the beacon of hope towards which all men are drawn. Spare us the hyperbole. It is not for praise that we fight. Oh? In light of all we have achieved, I felt it only meet to express my gratitude. All that we have achieved? <laughs> Spoken like a true outsider. Until the war is over, we have achieved nothing. The coming battle is a chance to excise the root of this conflict. And by my hand, it shall be done. Then, you may speak of achievement. T'was not mine intent to make light of your struggle. If I have given offense, then I apologize. But if I may speak freely, you would do well to be wary of the eye. Even now, it burns with insatiable hatred, watching unblinking for a sign of weakness. Should you falter for so much as a moment, it will surely consume you. Save your concern. I will consume the eye ere I let it consume me. Moriarty. Twelve be praised, thou hast not yet set forth. Across sand and snow have I journeyed, that I might deliver this gift unto thee. White Aurasite? But whence did it come? To mine amazement it lay hid amongst Moonbreeder's last effects. Twas but blind chance or providence that I did hap to spy it. Let no man claim that my late friend Eyre erred for lack of foresight. In the place whither thou goest, servants of darkness do lie in wait. Pray, give unto me thy pledge that thou wilt strike them down and avenge our fallen comrade. I thought to turn off my hat. That's okay. Hat. In fact, there's a lot of hats I just don't like. Some of them look cool, but they're not really. Let's go, Asagas. Asas Law. I can speak, really, I can. Ah, excellent timing. We've just finished our work on the Enterprise. She's so much improved, I've decided to give her a new name to suit. The Enterprise Excelsior. Or simply the Excelsior, if pressed for time. Star Trek reference. The Enterprise B was an Excelsior class starship. And since this is kind of like upgraded new version of the Enterprise uh, is like an Enterprise B. Once again, she'll carry Eorzea's protectors into battle. All aboard! I can do no more than see you off with prayers for your safety and success. Yet know that wheresoever you may go, my son's spirit goes with you. May the fury grant you strength. Return to us, all of you.
Enterprise Excelsior. Engage. Star Trek reference. enemy render unto me thy power Chief, we've got an Imperial battleship on our tail, and it's bleeding massive. Damn it! The bastards were waiting for us to open the door for them. Try to shake them. Hang on to something. We're all going to die! Tataru! She won't take much more of this! The time is come to use Heidlin's gift. Much blood has been spilled in my name. And for what? For a false cause that I created for want of the warmth of companionship. Saint Shiva, pray, Svelga. Pray, forgive this fool. But even now, I cannot let go of my dream. My dream of a tomorrow in which no child need freeze alone in the snow.
Thank you, Race Velga. <gasps> Is that Azel? What does she mean to do? Oh, goddess, born of mine own hopes and dreams, for the last time, I beseech you. Fill this vessel with your light. Still the hatred within our hearts and bless us with eternal grace! Farewell, warrior of light, and thank you for showing me the way. No! This ether, it was a crystal of light. She, too, was one of Heidelin's chosen. Fare you well, my lady. Glad to be back on solid ground, even if it said ground and floating in the sky. When that Imperial battleship appeared, I honestly thought we were finished. But we would have, have been had your friend not arrived when she did. Oh, grant her mercy. Brief though our time together, 
Giselle was a true friend, a gentle soul who fought for her beliefs. He, she would have made a fine sire. What is a sire but one who fights for our cause? Our hopes survive thanks to his sacrifice. That be enough. Yet, I cannot help but wonder. How came she know of our presence here? From the race, Felgar, I wager. You will have felt my channeling of the eye's power. It would seem they have been able to make peace with one another in the end. We gave her life because she believed in us. We owe it to her to see our mission through. See that dome light stretch further in? Let's make our way there. Everybody keeps saying ether, but because it's A E, I always think of it as ether. But uh, before we start exploring Asus Law, I think this is a good stopping point. Uh, I need to collect tombstones so I can get myself out with the uh, shire gear. But I think it's a good, good place to stop with that. So next tomorrow, uh, we will be taking in Asasla and uh, finding out uh, where the heck is the Archbishop. Uh, thank you for watching. Hopefully, I'll remember to. Don't forget, merchandise, zazzle.com slash comes out loud. Uh, Patreon, patreon.com slash comes out loud. PayPal.me slash comes out loud if you want to send us some cash for uh, server costs. And, uh, uh, there were two years, but uh, there to, to bank it up. Where I have to spend over 200 to $300 <laughs> for two years. They may be even some other. That's it. Thank you so much for watching. I will catch you tomorrow. Uh, also, check out regular Cups Out Loud shows. Uh, YouTube.com slash Cups Out Loud and Cups Out Loud.com.